Tachman, a human lesson number 15, now the Rebbe's own words. Number one, whoever is always involved in trying to bring people close to the service of God must guard himself so that the clebus and forces of evil of these people do not attach themselves to him. This is because this person who endeavors to attract and make souls, as in the souls that they made in Charan, is building a category of a sanctuary of the holy, holy represents the one who remains in Yerushalayim. Jerusalem will be called holy, meaning that because people remain bound to Yerushalayim, a perfect fear on account of this person, despite the fact that many fell away from their holiness. Nevertheless, on account of those that did remain in perfect fear, he will be called holy. That is what is meant by holy. Sanctuary represents the glory with which God is glorified. As brought in the Zoyer, when Jethro arrived, God's name was then glorified. This corresponds to tell of his glory among the nations. For when these distant ones draw themselves closer to the service of God, this is God's glory. This glory is an aspect of a sanctuary. As in his, in, in his sanctuary, everyone declares glory and this sanctuary of the holy always draws itself closer to its root, which is the heart of the one who made it, for that is its root, since the words that came out of the depth of the heart of an upright person, since the roots and since the words that came out of the depth of the heart of an upright person entered into the hearts of the above souls on account of which they returned to God. Now the sanctuary of the holy hovers above the enclo and enclose the life spirit that is in the heart of the upright person. For the spirit is in the heart as in I will grant you a new heart and a new spirit and the sanctuary of the holy draws its life force from this, from this spirit. As in... And the sanctuary of the holy draws its life force from the spirit. As in the lowly of spirit, yet sports glory. The lowly of spirit supports glory, but it is mainly the feet of the spirit that the sanctuary of the holy enclose. As in a spirit for those who walk in it. This is because this spirit possesses, possesses an entire structure and it is from, this, from the aspect of the feet that rises in arousal to right people to the service of God. As in right, a path in the wilderness to our God, a path which corresponds to the feet. This is alluded to in paths in their hearts, for the paths in their hearts rouse them to right. Those people dwelling in the wilderness and darkness to ride for them a path to the service of God. But since this sanctuary is made from the souls that had been distant until now, and there aren't many evil forces surrounding them, as in, this is Jerusalem, I have set it amidst the peoples. Where, where, where the sanctuary enclosed the heart, the evil forces are able to seize a foothold in the creation of thoughts of this upright person. What needs to be done for this is to elicit the angels of one's heart, which is represented by the enthusiasm of the heart. For the enthusiasm of the heart is an aspect of angels, as in an angel of God appeared to him from within the heart of the fire. An angel of God appeared to him from within the heart of the fire. This fire burns the evil forces. Then the sanctuary of the holy also draws power from this fire and burns the evil forces, trying to grab onto it as well, as in God's glory is it like a consuming fire. Oh, in number two now, the fire of this angel is created by the aspect of ju judiciousness. Mishpot. Of judiciousness. Judiciousness. By one's managing one's affairs judis, judicious, judiciously. Oh, judiciously. Judiciously, 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 by one's managing one's affairs judiciously, judiciously, by one's judging oneself, which corresponds to, for God implements with fire, judiciousness, judiciousness, judiciousness. Judiciousness is in the heart as in Aaron bore the judgment of the Israelites on his heart at all times. Judgment then comes to the light. Judgment then comes to the light, meaning that the heart is enthused and sits on a throne as in he established his throne for judgment, which corresponds to the aforementioned glory as in the throne of, the, of glory. This is alluded to in Sipport. 
My steps in your magolois roundabout paths. My steps corresponds to the aforementioned aspect of feet. Your magolois corresponds to the throne of glory. As in the back of the throne was a goil rounded on top. Meaning that the glory and clothes surrounds the heart. Meaning that the glory and clothes surrounds the heart. This corresponds to a faithful city filled with justice. City refers to Jerusalem, the holy city, it enclothes, surrounds justice, surrounds justice, it is alluded to in at that time. People will call Jerusalem God's throne, and all the peoples will gather unto her and no longer follow the foolishness of their evil hearts, for the fire of the angels in the heart will subdue their evil hearts. Number three, this corresponds to guarding the Shabbos, it is brought in the Zoya. God, my Shabbos. My Shabbos is, my Sabbaths is a circle with a square inside. My Sabbaths is a circle with a square inside, is a circle with a square inside. A circle represents the throne of glory, yes, in. The back of the throne was rounded on top. A square represents justice, as in it shall be square. It shall be square folded. Stay heated regarding the breastplate of justice. On weekdays the Shechina separates the holy from the unholy, but on the Shabbos she rests. In the future, in the future, in the future when all evil will be eliminated as in, they will no longer follow the foolishnesses of their evil hearts. It will be a day of eternal Shabbos, thus by way of this circle and square, by way of which evil is eliminated, the aspect of my Shabbos is, oh, it comes about, which corresponds to a circle and square. Number four, this corresponds to a forbidden item becoming neutralized. In an admixture of 60, 60 corresponds to a circle to the letter Samech. A Samech numerically is 60, which is a circle representing the whole, the throne of glory, as above corresponding to on the throne with kings. As in there are 60 queens to on the throne with kings. As in there are 60 queens. The forbidden item and evil thing is neutralized by the thrones of justice. An evil thing is neutralized by the thrones of justice. The reason why only the circle is mentioned is because this is on the manifest level. 
While the square is hidden within the circle. However, the main power of the Samech is specifically from the square. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Represented by the letter Mem. Corresponding to, he shall strike him 40 lashes. The Mem is numerically 40. The Samech receives from the Mem, which represents the thrones of justice. This is the meaning of... The Mem and the Samech on the tablet stood miraculously. Mem is the square, and Samech is the circle on the tablets of the heart, as in inscribed them upon the tablets of your heart. They stood miraculously. A miracle is a so a sign. Ay, ay, a miracle sign. Being an aspect of Shabbos, as in the Shabbos, is an eternal, eternal sign. Number five, this is in, this is I will give them in my house and within my walls a hand in context, a place and a name better than sons and daughters, a hand and a name in merit of guarding my Shabbos, corresponding to the circle and the square, a hand represented by a square. Corresponds to justice. A hand represented by a square corresponds to justice. As in my hand will grab the hold of justice. My hand will grab hold of Job of justice. A name is represented by a circle as in He guides me in roundabout paths of righteousness for the sake of his name. A hand also refers to one's ability to put out quality students and imbue them with the spirit of wisdom. As written, Joshua, son of Nun, was filled with the spirit of wisdom. For Moses had laid his hands upon him. One attains this ability from God. For the spring of wisdom emerges from the house of God. And with wisdom is a house built. A name also may, yeah, 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 means that one will attain a good name. All souls will desire to be rooted in his name, for the name is the soul, as in a living soul is its name. They will desire to be rooted in his soul, as in your name and your remembrance are the, are, are the desire of the soul. They will attain this name through the aspect of a wall. Oh, now this aspect of a wall is represented by patience, by quelling one's anger. This is because wealth and the quelling of anger are one and the same concept. Oh, yeah. Tony, the Yeshua, the yes is because wealth and the quelling of anger are one and the same concept. And are both called a wall. Anyone who damages the wall of wealth acquires for himself anger and chaimom. Transform, transforming chaimom wall into chaimom rage. They are both from the left side as written. Evil comes from the north. And gold comes from the north. Wealth is also a wall as written. The fortune of a wealthy what one is his fortress of strength like a towering wall in his mansion while regarding anger the verse says a man who has no restraints on his spirit is like breached and like a breached city without a wall as when a person receives wealth he then has a wall and the wall of wealth is a restraint to his anger sometimes no anger overwhelms a person and one then and one then damages his Damages the wall of wealth in this way. Anger damages wealth in this way. Anger damages wealth. So when the evil inclination provokes a person to get angry, one should know whoa, whoa, that at that very moment one is being sent from above a certain amount of money, and the evil inclination is trying to spoil this for him. Now the main guarding of the name, the guarding of the soul, is only by guarding against anger. Anger blemishes the soul as in with his anger. He tears apart his soul. But when one guards oneself from getting angry and strengthens the wall of faith, one also strengthens one's soul and one's name. Then all souls desire to be encompassed 
within his soul. The root of all souls is in wealth, as in his soul depends on it. However, this reason, robbing a Jew's money is tantamount to robbing his soul, and the oh yeah, as in robbing the soul of those who rob them. Robbing the soul of those who rob of them. Thus everyone desires to be close to a wealthy person, for that is the root of their souls. Hence the merit producing wise students and having many souls. Ay, 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 and having many souls. Because one can pass within one soul is certainly better than sons and daughters. Sons and daughters are a few, whereas these are many, and they receive their life for us. From him, as if he has given birth to them. This is the meaning of I will bless you and augment your name. Upon which Rashi comments, I will bless you with money for the main augmentation of the name. And the soul is through wealth. All this takes place by way of the throne of joy ju- and justice. By way of the throne and justice. For my once managing one's affairs do judiciously. For my one. <laughs> For by one's managing one's affairs judiciously, one is able to teach many students one's wisdom in a way that will not harm them. Teaching is mainly dependent upon the years upon one's managing one's affairs judiciously as stated. Sages, be careful with your words, and the students coming after you will drink bitter waters. But when honor is augmented, the soul of the one augmenting the honor is also augmented. For the soul is seated in glory as in let my soul not enter their secret, nor my glory be part of their assembly. Thus, when one's name and one's soul, and thus, when one's name and one's soul are augmented, all souls desire to be compassed. All souls desire to be encompassed within one's soul and one's name. This is the meaning of a whole a house and wealth is a legacy from forbearers. A house and wealth is a legacy from forebearers. A house and a fortune correspond to in my house and within my walls. This ability is received from the forefathers, for the forefathers converted proselytes. Regarding Abraham it is written, the souls that they made. Regarding Isaac the verse says, Jacob settled in the land of Megure, the sojourning of his father, upon which the Medrash says, states, From here we learn that Isaac also converted Gerim, sojourners, proselytes, hence Megure, the proselytes of his father. And regarding Jacob, the verse says, Jacob said to his household and to those with him, which was addressing the proselytes, as the verse concludes, get rid of the foreign gods. Only number six to know, there are certain wicked people whom it is forbidden to bring under the wings of his service, for they would drag down the one who draws them near from his level. We see this from Moses, who elevated the air of Rav, mixed multitude, only for God to later tell him, to tell, to later tell him as a result, go down for your people have become corrupt to the aforementioned judgment, lacks the power to subdue their evil, and when there is no judgment, great damage is brought about, both in the angels that are created by judgments and in the circle and the square both in the angels that are created by judgments and in the circle and the square this is the meaning of why are the eyes of the Tamudim Dehim Tamud represents the wicked from whom we do not accept comfort converts as our sages said we do not accept converts from the Tamudim whoever draws them near his eyes dim this corresponds to the damaging of the Shabbos. The Shin represents the three colors of the eyes. And Bas represents the pupil of the eye. Bas Ayin. This corresponds to the damaging of the wall and the house. Which corresponds to the eye. Which corresponds to the eyes. For the eyes connected with wisdom as in. The eyes of both of them were all hoping. And regarding the soul it says. Beholding with the eyes is better than imagining with the soul. This represents the damage done by anger as in, my eyes were dimmed by anger. It corresponds to wealth as in, when bounty increases, there are many to consume it. So what benefit has its owner other than beholding it?
When bounty increases, there are many to consume it. So what benefit has its owner other than beholding it? So they asked Hill of the Prince, Why are their eyes dehim? That is, why are all the aspects of eyes damaged? When one draws near those who are not fitting to be drawn near, such as the, as the Tarmud, Tarmudim, such as the Tarmudim. Hillel answered, because they dwell between Choylois, sand dunes, that is, the success of these wicked people is so great that justice has no power to subdue their wickedness. This is their ways, Yo Chilu, are successful at all times. Your judgments are exalted above him. Between the Choylois corresponding to Yechilu, 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 representing their success so there is no judgment against them. Though justice is necessary, since judgments are exalted above them, damage is caused to the aspect of the eyes until they are the Rabbi's own words. Three emerge from one of lesson number 58 and this lesson of the sanctuary of the Holy Word Ra, delivered in as one lesson surrounding the verse. Fortunate are the people that know the show is blessed. Later though, when the Rebbe Narach Nachman Achmam Yimun wrote them down, he divided them into two lessons. When I received this le- these lessons from him in writing, he said to me, I have divided them into two. I understood that he had a specific intention in this. But only God knows his intention. Oh, it's surrounding the verse, fortunate are the people that know the chauffeur's blast. Oh, lesson number six. Rebbe <laughs> Shimon began speaking and said, it is time to act for God. Though their path is a toy, they contain a very great understanding, an understanding that can only, be reached, but can only be reached by way of wealth.